Hello guys, all the way from Columbus, this is a MLS UK podcast with me, Danny B. And, well, introduce yourself guys. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Patrick Golden, I'm the editor of uh, MassReport.com, a fan site for Columbus Crew Soccer. And I'm Chris Lamacchia, I write and do other things for MassReport.com with Patrick. So these guys are like Columbus-based celebrities, because... Sure. Because <laughs> that's how big the crew are <laughs> in Columbus. It's so big that they think Chris is a part of the team when he wears his jersey. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, as soon as they've worked out what team it is. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> once they figure it out. But yeah, so obviously I'm here in Columbus, so I really want to ask you guys some stuff. Okay. Because, you know, they hear me a lot, so why don't I not? Bring it so, on. <laughs> so what do you guys think about, you know, you know the site. How, what do you guys think about the site as a... MLS UK? Yeah. Um, I love it. No, I, a random other side. Oh, a random I, I oh. thought he was talking about Massa Report. I, I no. really think that's, no, that's, that's not, the that's, bee's that's, knees. Well, I mean, you know. It it's, is. It's, it's, it's <laughs> check it out. But I'm talking about my website. <laughs> your website. Uh, MLS UK, I think it's great. I, I think that, um, you know, to take the, the game, our game, and take it to your people, you know, because you're on another planet. Yeah, we are. Uh, it's, it's great. I love what you're doing. I, I feel the same way. Yeah. It's... Uh, we have plenty of people in the, the states that uh, that watch a lot of uh, Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, you know the whole nine yards. But seeing people who will watch MLS, you know, who aren't Americans, yeah. who you know enjoy soccer, mm-hmm. maybe lower league soccer. Um, it, no, it's it's really nice to hear someone else's take on the league that's not you know a media personality. <laughs> you mean you mean I'm not a media personality? Well, I mean you are. I am. Duh. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's Jonathan <laughs> Wilson, um, some other English guy, uh, John Watson, and you. Oh, yes. There we go. And then, then and then Kyle Martino. Yeah. Yes. Good. <laughs> but yeah, so we're obviously here, and we went to the Toronto game, which I suppose I have to talk about because they are, you know, my blogs. So. Yeah. How are you yeah, talking about that? Yeah. It was it was really good, wasn't it? Everyone loved it. Everyone really enjoyed themselves. Yeah. Good. Right. Move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. It was. Um, Disappointing, like because obviously for me it was my first time at the game and it was a derby, however you say it. It, it, it was a game. It was a game. It was a rivalry game. Right. But yes. um, I'm getting some photos taken from the distance. Goal six are famous. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a derby game and it was a pretty disappointing result. But yeah, the atmosphere was amazing. It was for you guys. Obviously, you were there more than me. How is how did that atmosphere rack up in terms of normal game or previous Toronto games? It, it's, it's um, well, Toronto games have changed since they don't bring as many people. They used to travel in, in quite a few numbers, however. Uh, they, have a, they have a set of passionate fans. Uh, the crew with the Nordic, passionate set of fans. Um, really, that, that's pretty much how American soccer is right now. There, there are groups out there like the Nordic. Yeah. Like uh, the North Enders in Toronto, uh, the, the the Home Depot Center has uh, Angel City Brigade, yeah. and Seattle has thirty six thousand fans, yeah. and DC's got Para Brava. Yeah, and yeah. so you have these groups, that, some older than others, that it, it really is a, uh, so, an energizing atmosphere. So how important? Because obviously in England we don't really have that element of supporters groups as such. You know, right. We don't it's, have organized sports groups that are in connection with the club and. How important do you think that is for the league and the development of the league in terms of support coming in? I think it's I think it's extremely important. You know, without those those core supporters groups, the league reply uh, the league the league relies, if I can talk, uh, on on you know just casual fan walk up sales, which is you know here in America with soccer being a a fourth tier sport at best, it's not going to bring in the revenue. So you know if you if if the teams can show that there is pastoral support that will bring other folks into the stadiums and you know increase awareness uh, of, yeah. of the sport and that's really what we're trying to do yeah I mean, we're only 15 years into this yeah you know, it's still a young league it's, it's a young very young league right but um i've completely forgotten my question i was going to ask now yeah well that's okay oh, that's um, fine we'll just play it go <laughs> yeah, i mean you could talk about hogwarts somewhere yeah i should talk about hogwarts somewhere. <laughs> we just got done recording the uh, massive report podcast you should check it out it's massreport.com, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, simple, easy. Check it out. And, and, and it is true to form. We do abuse our guests. Danny yeah. was nice enough to come on. We asked him all sorts of nice questions like, yes. uh, 
um, is their ministry of silly walks. Yeah. So um, he even asked him power. to speak in an, an American accent, which he was, he's a very gracious guy. I'm very good at that. You know, we, <laughs> we, 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 we really appreciate, you know, seeing someone who comes in to, to talk about, you know, American soccer from a different mm -hmm. viewpoint. I've, I've, I've been fascinated that there are people out there that, you know, follow the crew or follow... I guess New York Red Bulls. Yeah, uh, yeah crazy a, enough. Wait, there's a New England fan. Yeah, there's a guy. Some, in the some, fan. one of you crazy people has chosen to follow the New England Revolution. <laughs> Who? What are you thinking? The New England Revolution. They. Uh, Steve, Nichol. Steve, Nichol. Steve Nichol. Steve Nichol. Steve Nichol. That's there all you gotta say. But that brings me to the question that I just remembered that I was gonna ask. Ooh, yes. You're welcome. It's <laughs> all right. Um, how do you guys? Because in relation, in just of guesstimations, in terms of the amount of population that watch EPL and other such, how many of those do you think transfer across to watching MLS within America? I would say there's quite a few. I think there's a fair overlap that there are people who watch both, who just yeah. love watching soccer, mm -hmm. football, if you prefer. <laughs> um, we do. That, that, that in, just enjoy the game. And so there'll be Arsenal fans, and then there'll be Crew fans, and then they'll have a, a Serie A team, they, yeah. a team in every league. And there are people that, you know, MLS is my team. You know, I don't follow anything else out besides that. And right. you know, I know a few people like that. They, you know, limited time sports fans, so they follow American sports. There are people that they like Premier League, and that's a and you know, and that's it. Manchester United yeah. is my squad. I, I have no love for anybody else. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it, 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 it's a it's a growing group of of people that follow the sport from different heritages. You know, yeah. either they grew up with it. Uh, as an immigrant family, or they uh, came to it with the World Cup, uh, you know, kind of the booms in '94, yeah. 2002, you know, yeah. last year. There was one thing that we went to, to New York earlier to Red Bull Arena earlier this year, and I did notice that there were as many uh, EPL and you know European jerseys in the stands at Red Bull Arena as there were Red Bull jerseys. Yeah, uh, which I thought that was interesting because here in Columbus, you know, it's. You'll have a vast majority of people wearing MLS jerseys, and maybe not Columbus jerseys because that's just our fans are kind of eh, uh, sometimes. <laughs> you, you don't see a lot. You see a lot of Columbus jerseys, right. but you know you'll see the so you'll see the just, various. Yeah. You'll see usually a teenage boy jerseys. wearing a yeah. uh, a Manchester United jersey, or the girls uh, will be wearing the the Beckham jerseys in a yeah. couple weeks when they yeah. come into town. Yeah. Um, but really, when it comes down to it, you know, their crew fans. You look at a Seattle game. You know, they're they're in. 100% rave green, which if you've not seen it, I'd spare yourself the time. Yeah, don't look at rave green. Don't do it. And don't taunt it either. Um, <laughs> don't don't mention it. Uh, but, you know, Portland jerseys, uh, you, you look at these groups, these supporters groups that, you know, yes. there's a lot of the jerseys, there are a lot of the colors, you know, scarf culture has come, you know, fairly, yeah. fairly strong within the United States. Mm. So it, it, it's really interesting because there's a big British contingent, you know, Toronto being uh, Canadian has that yeah. tie tie to Britain since um, you know a little more closely tied, but you know certain other parts yeah. pull from uh, you know organized groups of Italian soccer or yeah. you know uh, yeah. Spanish soccer or you know some places Mexican soccer because there's a large influence of yeah. uh, Latin culture within the United States and it's it's really kind of you can't pin it all on one type of soccer culture in this yeah. country. It's, uh, it's really kind of interesting, you kind of get the, the mix that... Yeah, well I know from my experience it's nothing like what we have in England and it's very much more towards the European, I suppose we are European, but you know, the European style of fan base is more with the dancing, drinking, you know, right. singing more songs almost, more than chants, whereas in England it's a lot more aggressive chants yeah. and things. Yeah, it is. Well, whereas, in the, whereas in America there's a lot more of the... You know, like the glory to Columbus and all right, that. It's sort right. of more songy rather than sort of angry shouting. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that, that our league is, you know, for all the right reasons, trying to keep things clean. They don't, you yeah. know, oh, yeah. you know, they, they yeah. need, you, they need, need to, to, you do need to bring they need the families in. And, and you know, if, if we get 9,000 people dropping the F-bomb all at the same time, that's going to turn off some families. Yeah. And we've done that. We get in trouble for it. Yeah. We've been there. Oh, yeah. We know. The, 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 the crew has three main supporters groups, Crew Union, the Hudson Street Hooligans, and La Turbina, which is a, you know, a Latin-driven uh, supporters group uh, by the, the Latin American fans yeah. of the crew. So you have a lot of different people coming from a lot of different uh, you know, groups that, that, are, uh, that are getting into soccer 
from different from different points of view. So yeah, you yeah. have and then uh, the American tailgate, which you talked about a little yeah. bit, which. It, it, you really don't have anything that's quite like that, no. so... We get drunk in the parking lot before the game. That's yeah, exactly that what is. happens. Yeah. We eat a lot of food, we get drunk in the parking lot, and then we go inside the stadium Both and watch the, the game. the back of a pickup truck. And, and, the, and the food is, yeah. is Americanized, so it is incredibly unhealthy. Yeah. Would you say that? Yes. Yes. Incredibly unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> like, another, another thing that's obviously quite a big thing in... in Major League Soccer is the designated players and mm -hmm. things like that. How important do you think? Because obviously it's all about bringing in players, massive name players, traditionally, you know, Robbie Keane's the most recent one. Right. How how important do you think that is for the development of the league? Is the the style of you know the bringing in these players like Henri, like Keane, like Beckham. Well, I think I think that Robbie Keane and Beckham. yeah, <laughs> golden balls. Um, I think that Robbie Keane is, is a special case because up until now, most of the designated players, the big European designated players, have been at the end of their career. Yeah. Robbie Keane is not the end of his career. Yeah. He came here because he knows that he can play here and compete, and it's a good place to continue what he was doing. Yeah. Um, but with guys like Henri, with Beckham... And he gets about three times the money. But, and he yeah. gets a crap ton of money, <laughs> right. Uh, and, and and even the the designated player role is, is changing. The crew didn't use it on you know Guillermo Berescaloto in two thousand eight, but had to apply it in 09. You have designated players like Freddie Montero, younger player, um, kind of tailed off in his production. Yeah. The league's changing the rules so that um, you know players who are 20, 21, 22 don't cost as much. So I don't think yeah. it's necessarily on Reed Beckham, you know, Keane anymore. It's yeah. not necessarily that it's maybe results on the field as well, much more but than do you it think, was. Do you think by bringing in those names you're getting more recognition worldwide or are you more interested in getting the actual talent there so you can, because at the moment you seem to get, when you get good talent coming through things, they then get exported, which doesn't bring masses for the league. I think it's a little bit of both. I think that we need the big names to become relevant worldwide, but yeah. we also need to grow organically from yeah. home as well. Yeah. MLS is going to be a feeder league for the foreseeable future, uh, so... You know, don't necessarily have that in England, but we're more akin to a Scandinavian league in that re regard, or you know, Holland, or yeah. you know, uh, Iceland. Iceland's leagues. No, yeah, okay, Iceland, <laughs> uh, which uh, crew well, great Mark team. Schulte came from an Iceland uh, team. Troy, Troy Perkins, who from Columbus, went to Iceland. And no, he, he went to Sweden. Oh, uh, that's right. Okay, I take you know, it back. I send my guy to good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bad, my bad. So, so really, it's kind of a little bit of both yeah. when it yeah. comes down to it, because trying to bring in the talent to raise the game, and then also growing American talent, and also trying to win and bring in the the big names yeah. like Beckham or Henri and get that bump. It's trying to do a bunch of things at once. Well, I mean, I think my my thing on it is I think that by bringing these players in, you've got your Beckham, John Reese. The players that are in those teams are getting to train and play with them yeah. on a weekly basis. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's always going to increase your, you know, your talents and your skills. And you know, like you see it in the Man United team, you get these young lads that are playing with gigs, skulls, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, Rooney. And you're learning from amazing players. So you know, that's where I, I think having these players in, right? I mean, Robbie Keane, maybe not so much. He's not, he's Robbie Keane. He's, yeah, he's not going to bring a massive amount of technical skill to them. But you look at Henri, yeah. Beckham, Beckham's, you know, is easily one of the best, if not the best, crosser, free kick taker in the game. Yeah. Or was certainly. Yeah, you do Whereas, get a lot of professional that, role models. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you get that that people, you know, the Galaxy team are learning with them yeah. all the time. And obviously, the crew team get to learn from Mendoza. Right. And how to um, use only their left foot, which is really <laughs> helpful. Well, well for, <laughs> beforehand, they did get to learn from a player like Guillermo Berescaloto. Yes. Right. Well, there, yeah, there are some to... of these leaders that you have on the teams yeah. that you know you you do get yeah. from some of these veterans. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we should wrap it up because everyone's got to go because we're in America. We've got one minute apparently, so we really have to. Go. But yeah, um, thank you guys for having well, me here. And, thank uh, you for coming. Yeah. Yes, we really appreciate uh, having you guys having you out here. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope you guys like it, and we'll I'll talk to you guys on the back of the room, probably. <laughs> so yeah, Woo. go through. <laughs>